so asking why again and again if you've got kids maybe you're you're used to that right it could be a never-ending process but what we're going to talk about today is this actual specific tool called the five whys and how can it be helpful well it's actually developed in this uh, process that Toyota started back in the 1930s the Toyota production system and so they found it to be a very useful tool in uh, troubleshooting problems on the assembly line if there was an issue that came up you know how could they fix that problem so uh, hopefully it wouldn't happen again right and then just you know continue their their operation smoothly and so uh, for them it would look something like this you know the first a problem would happen the first question would be you know why in this case why did the robot stop well the answer is you know the circuit was overloaded and it blew blew a fuse something like that right well then it follows with the next question well why was the circuit overloaded right and so the answer to that is well there was insufficient lubrication on the bearings and so it locked up well is that the real the real problem to fix no it just keeps going right so the next question would be well why was there insufficient lubrication on the bearings well the oil pump was not circulating enough oil well why was the oil pump not <laughs> circulating enough oil right so we're just following the trail right like to see where it leads the pump was clogged with metal shavings and so why was it clogged with metal shavings well because there was no no filter on the pump and so you know the, in that case as an example of you know five whys that they would ask in a typical you know situation on the production line today right and so going through this process uh, it's it's more of a principle you know in in this case five whys got them to that point but that's not like a hard and fast thing it has to be five you'll always arrive at the root cause after five questions could be more could be less but uh, it's not really about <laughs> not really about assigning blame right it's not like well who didn't put the the you know the filter on the pump you know they're the person who's at fault here right uh, <laughs> it's it's not necessarily the, the case where it's it's coming down to a person who was the failure um, in that case you could ask another question right well well why did this person not you know why were they not able to do what they should have been able to do. So we can take it beyond just arriving at a person who is a failure. So uh, that's really the end goal is to find the root cause of the problem. And so in that case, it's not gonna be a person necessarily. It's, it's maybe a, a reason or a cause why that person wasn't able to do their job. And then that's something that can be addressed as part of the process, as part of, of you know, overcoming that, that problem. And so, Another thing that uh, this process of asking these why questions repeatedly uh, is that uh, not only does it help you get to the root cause of something, but interestingly, they make the point that it's not really a solution you're after. A solution could tend to just deal with a symptom that you've kind of found along the way. But uh, they use this term, it's a countermeasure, is what we're really looking for. Something that will prevent that problem from happening again. And in that way, this process leads to something that can be very robust and uh, really improve things over time so that we don't keep you know, encountering these, these roadblocks or, or these problems. So it's a simple little thing, you know, just asking these questions, you know, following the trail wherever it leads. And uh, that's, that's basically it. That's the principle behind it that uh, we can apply not just on an assembly line, you know, something mechanical like that, with that example, but even in, in a design process, you know, where, if something breaks down, the communication isn't happening, well, why is that not happening? And, and you know, just following that trail. So, do you want to try it? Got a little, yeah. little example here, okay. Why did the Titanic sink? What happened? Why did the Titanic sink? It hit an iceberg? Oh, it hit an iceberg. Okay. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> it hit an iceberg. But is there anything that happened in between there that really caused the Titanic to sink? 
So why did the Titanic actually go down? Oh, interesting. It's interesting. Steel, steel wow. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, the the for following the, the, the trail, the Titanic sank because it filled up with water, right? It wasn't because... <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't because there was too much cargo on board or, you know, anything like that, right? It took on water. <laughs> well, why did it take on water, you know? <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, so, you know, you can see how this, you know, we're really just trying to find out the, you know, the, the real cause from one problem to the next, right? Okay, so it took on water because it had a hole. And it received this hole because it hit an iceberg, as you said, so right? So it's like, you can see how you can make this as simple a thing, or you can really like get down to the, 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 the nitty gritty steps along the way. Well, why did it hit an iceberg? Any thoughts? Someone wasn't paying attention, all right. <laughs> well, we could say it couldn't turn in time. So, so why couldn't it turn in time? There we go. There's another why question. Someone already said it already. This is where it gets interesting. The, the lookouts didn't see it in time. Maybe because of the weather or whatever, right? But... Uh, now, if depending on who you ask, you might get a different answer. Someone else might say they're going too fast. And so there's an interesting relationship there, right? Like, and, and now we're starting to see what's the countermeasure. So if the lookouts can't see far enough to, to know if there's something to avoid because they're going too fast, there needs to be communication there so that, you know, they slow down or, you know, there's communication to prevent that from happening, right? And so, depending on who you ask, you could get a different answer. And then, already mentioned, there was another cause, uh, wasn't there? The design, right? Ultimately, how the ship was constructed, the strength of the, the hull, the steel plating, the rivets, you know, there's, there's design considerations there that also contributed to the fact that, you know, maybe it could have brushed that iceberg and withstood that impact if the construction and you know some of those design decisions had been more robust so the iceberg alone wasn't you know the true cause of why it sank right and so it's interesting to see how a lot of times going through this five why process isn't always just going to be a linear thing that leads you know from the problem to okay here's the root cause it could start to branch out and so, in fact, they'll actually use a fishbone diagram, they call it, because you'll have these, these branches that come out. And in this case, here was, I found an example of bad coffee. Why did you get bad coffee? Well, you know, there's four main causes that could have all come into play, right? People who are involved, the procedures, material, or, you know, ingredients or whatever, or equipment, you know, all had, could have had contributing causes to why you ended up with you know, a bad cup of coffee, right? So uh, this, it could get quite complicated, but the key to going through this process is you need to have the people who know about these things, they're going through this process so that they can actually say what happened. And so in the case of the Titanic, you know, different people in the room might have come to different conclusions, but then you can start to build the full picture and maybe you'll need several countermeasures to prevent that kind of thing from happening again and so this process isn't something that's speculative uh you know well this might have been why you know kind of just thinking down those lines but this is you know this hap this problem happened what can we do to address it and correct it so it's we're dealing with something that really took place and really finding out the reasons why and so and that will help it become this you know productive little tool that can that can uh, make things better, you know, as, as things move along.